Humans have been entertaining one another since the dawn of civilization. Throughout history, we see famous figures who were immortalized for their ability to captivate an audience. Today is no different. Musical composers, playwriters, actors, singers, both living and dead, have become household names. What you might not have known is that, once upon a time, clowns were among their ranks. That is correct. Clowns were once as well known and respected as any other entertainer. And they also encompass much more than the circus artists and birthday performers that they're often associated with. And they have a much deeper history than many people realize. In fact, the first clowns appeared in the 5th dynasty of Egypt as priests that served a comedic as well as a religious role. In ancient Greek and Roman empires, clowns performed in plays for the theatrical and comedic pleasure of the public. In medieval times, jokers were welcomed into the courts of kings. But today, people seem more terrified of clowns than anything else. While most studies conclude that 10% or less of people suffer from genuine cholerophobia, many more people still find clowns to be generally unsettling. They have become a staple of horror, and they no longer hold the status that they once did. All this begs the question, what happened? Let's first look at just before when clowns were at the height of their popularity during modern times, starting with a man named Joseph Grimaldi, who was generally considered to be the father of modern clowning. Grimaldi rose to fame in the late 18th century and remained one of the most sought-after comical performers throughout all of England until his retirement in the 1820s. During this time, he introduced the white-faced clown, dazzling audiences with his physical comedy and a bizarre look consisting of a white profile, bright red spots on the cheeks, and a blue mohawk. It was a stark contrast to many of the previous performers of his time. Although he was primarily a theatrical artist, his act would later be adopted by circus performers. He is regarded by many as the most famous clown in history, and to this day, clowns are still occasionally referred to as Joey's. It was even claimed that an eighth of London's population during his time had seen him perform. Grimaldi's career would lead to a whole new era of clowning. Now, let's fast forward to the mid-19th century and shift our focus to the USA to witness the beginning of the Golden Age of Circus, a time that would last until the middle of the 20th century. During this time, we would see tycoons such as P.T. Barnum and the Ringling Brothers turn the American circus into the most lucrative entertainment hub in the entire world. Clowns, along with many other performers, were in higher demand than they ever would be again. They would become an integral part of the American showbiz industry and would be cemented into American pop culture. Unfortunately, this popularity may also have been what led to their downfall. As clowns started to creep their way into popular culture, they also made their way into popular literature. Many comics, novels, and movies today still feature clowns as main characters, but as one looks through these works of art, a very obvious pattern emerges. Clowns are almost always placed in an antagonistic lighting, doomed to be the villain, the monster, the psychopath. Now, Although this is popular in modern times, it's hardly a modern concept. Clowns were often demonized and humiliated even in novels and movies written over a century ago. One of the earliest works of art where this can be seen is a 1928 silent film called He Who Gets Slap, a movie about a scientist named Paul Baumont who is said to present his work to the Academy of Science only to discover that the Baron, whose house he had been living in, had stolen all of his research with the help of Balmont's own wife. Balmont exclaims, You have told them all my discoveries, but you have not told them they are mine. The Baron then claims that Balmont is merely an assistant and slaps him with the back of his hand. Balmont is laughed at by the entire academy. 
and he then finds out that his wife has been having an affair with the Baron. This somehow leads to him becoming a circus clown whose act consists of him pretending to present work to a collection of academics before promptly being slapped by every clown in the circus. Every night, he counts the slaps and the laughs. An utterly miserable existence, if you ask me. But perhaps the greatest example of popular literature clowning on clowns is with the character that is perhaps the greatest villain of all time, the Joker, who made his debut in the year 1940 in the first issue of the Batman comic book series. He was introduced as a demented serial killer who wore clown makeup and had a disfigured face that made him permanently seem as if smiling. He would go on murder sprees and inject victims with his venom that would cause their lifeless faces to grin uncontrollably. It's easy to say that this clown prince of crime certainly didn't bring any favor to the clowning community. Now, these are just two examples of the prejudice against clowns found in popular culture, but it does illustrate the general trend. Throughout the last century, Authors and filmmakers have been obsessed with the idea of taking these performers whose job is to bring laughter and joy to their audience and portraying them either as monsters or pathetic losers who failed everywhere else in life. But for the most part, this hatred, or underlying fear rather, was confined to the realm of fiction. Clowns weren't really psychopaths out on the prowl for their next victims. That is, until what might have been the final nail in the coffin. John Wayne Gacy. Serial killer John Wayne Gacy was arrested and later convicted in 1978 for the murder of 33 boys and young men during the 70s. He had also previously been found guilty of more than one case of sexual assault. What shocked the world was that, during the time of his arrest, he had provided services as a clown for children's parties and charitable events. His victims would often be the children that he had met at these parties. This was unspeakably tragic, and it may have been what cemented the public's twisted view on clowns that their own media had been feeding them for all those years. There is one final possible solution as to why clowns have fallen in status as far as they have. The passage of time. The mid to late 20th century seemed to favor art forms that were easily commercialized as pieces of media. Musicians could have their work recorded and sold as an album or aired over radio. Actors could have their performances captured with a video camera and aired on television or saved on a tape. But art forms that were largely intended for a live audience, such as clowning, were left behind. Not completely forgotten, but certainly overall not as popular or as idolized as they once were. Ultimately, it may have been a combination of all of these things that led to clowns becoming the butt of this brutal, unforgiving joke we call society. Mockery, prejudice, murder, and changing times prove too much for this art form to handle. Which is unfortunate, but at the end of the day, all the things in this world must come to an end. Kingdoms fall, languages die out, and even art can decay. But it doesn't have to lose meaning. We can still decide whether or not we perpetuate the worldview on clowns. Or maybe, once again, put them on pedestals. Or, we could start viewing them for what they truly are. Simply, fellow human beings.